welcome to this 25th Sunday after Pentecost and as we're coming closer to Advent Sunday we praise God for bringing another Advent season and Christmas into our lives today is a very special Sunday for children we call it Children's Day you know we like to pray for all the children and Anurag Smith have prepared something for children and we pray that God will bless our Sunday school children and all the children and I'd like to especially pray for children just now and then we further move ahead in our worship okay let's look to the Lord in prayer Lord bless all the children they are your very blessed fruits into this world Lord we thank you Lord for being in the family yes Lord you create family you give us children you we bear fruit in our family we praise you bless our children Lord in time of COVID they're going in a very tough time of their life. They've never seen such thing in their life. And Lord, we pray that you will strengthen them, especially the parents who take care of them. Uh, the children rejoice in doing all kinds of activities today, drawing, painting, poetry, and spending time with their, with their parents today. Make them joyful today, Lord. The joy remain, Lord, in Lord Jesus Christ. And let us rejoice with the children today and make them to be a blessed and Lord joyful in your living presence. So Lord, we praise and thank you for all our children. As you said, Lord, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. To such belongs the kingdom of God. So Lord, we praise you. We adore you. Bless them, Lord. I bless our time of worship as you move ahead, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today our theme for worship is the, a generous spirit. The Bible says, an offering of a willing heart will I give thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. So, you know, the Bible always say God loves a cheerful giver. And God loves the generosity of the Spirit into the life of us. This is the gift of God in our life. So let us hear and read and sing praises of God today as we worship our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all good things, cleanse our hearts from envy and greed and teach us the joy of sharing your gift with others so that all we have may be used for your glory. To Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and ever. Amen. The responsive reading this morning is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verses 1, 7 to 10, and 14 to 15. Please respond by saying, What shall I render to the Lord for all his bounty to me? The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Hear, O my people, that I will speak. 
O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Testament reading is taken from the book of Exodus chapter 35 reading from verse 20 to 29 the book of Exodus chapter 35 reading from verse 20 to 29 then all the congregation of the people of Israel departed from the presence of Moses and they came everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit moved him and brought the Lord's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting and for all its service and for the holy garments. So they came, both men and women. All who were of a willing heart bought brooches and earrings and signet rings and armlets and all sorts of gold objects, every man dedicating an offering of gold to the Lord. And everyone who possessed blue or purple or scarlet yarns or fine linen or goat's hair or tanned ram's skin or goat skin brought them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver or bronze brought it as the Lord's contribution, and everyone who possessed acacia wood of any use in the work bought it. And every skillful woman spun with her hands, and they all brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen. All the women whose hearts stirred them to use their skill spun the goat's hair, and the leaders bought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and the breastpiece, and spices and oil for the light, and for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. All men and women, the people of Israel, whose heart moved them to bring anything for the work that the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. Here ends the reading of the Holy Word. Today's reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1-9. to We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but... They gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and in all earnestness, and in our love for you, so that see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love is also genuine. For you know... The grace of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. Oh.
The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. Then he said to them in his teaching, Beware of the scribes who desire to go around in long robes, love greetings in the marketplaces, the best seats in the synagogues, and the best places at feasts, who devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. These will receive greater condemnation. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which makes a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, whole livelihood. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his word. Let us thank God for his goodness and let us pray for the world and for the church. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, You have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray. We thank you, Lord, for ourselves and for the church and for people in this world. Thank you for your living presence. Thank you, Lord, in this created world, in the nations of this world, that your living presence is there. And we thank you, Lord, for our country also, where people worship you, adore your name. We pray that you would give wisdom to the leaders of the nation, especially to our president, the prime minister, the lieutenant governor and chief minister of Delhi, and to all in authority under them, direct our nation and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may all honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our church and our country and throughout the world, especially the Church of North India, for its councils, leaders, and especially and our minister. We pray for P.C. Singh, our moderator, and also Bishop of Diocese Delhi, that he has taken additional charge from 6th of July. And the moderator, 
Dharmaraj Rasalam, moderator of the Church of South India. G. Vargis Mahathodius, the Metropolitan of the Marthoma Church. And for our presbyters, Timothy, Dennis, Jayakumar, our lay leader, Ashish, and Anurag. That Lord, your bless will be upon the church through their services. Strengthen your church to carry forward the work of Christ, that we all who confess his name may unite in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our neighbors who stay near to us, our families, our friends, to whom we work. We pray, Lord, that there will be a cordial relationship in our families, with our neighbors, that we be able to grow in your grace and your love, Lord. Give grace to our families and friends, our neighbors, and those to whom we work, that we may serve you in one another and love each other as you love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also want to remember as you give us full and things at home, we remember the hungry, the destitute, the poor, the oppressed, the unemployed during the time of COVID, Lord. Many have lost their job. Many have become poor. Pray for those who provide to their needs. Many have died because of COVID, of old age. Give them hope, Lord, at this time that they lost, lost their dear one. And we pray that those who help them, Lord, that your presence be upon them to the bereaved family. Strengthen up all, all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in the time of need. And lead them to know the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You also give thanks to the people who have left your heavenly abode. And during time of COVID, many from our church, from families, and at large over the nations, many have left. Lord, we pray that you be with the family at this hour. Lord, guard and protect them for the losses that have taken place in the family. That they continue to remain faithful to you. They commend to your unfailing love. That in them yours will be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age. Praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Let us all say together. Hear us, Heavenstone, Heavenly Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
confess our sins. Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ said, The Lord our God is the only Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved by God's grace to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Let us say the prayer together. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgive all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. To Jesus Christ our Lord, let us all say together, Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us share peace with each other. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us say together and also with you.
Let's pray. Lord, the Heavenly Father, we pray as you look upon to the word that we look to ourselves. Not our will, that your will take us in listening and hearing of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, so Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. No matter how much more we have, something that we need in our life is to share with others. There's something, you know, that we have some potentials God has gifted us in our life to make somebody's life better. Are we willing to share and willing to give? That's, that's what the theme is all about today. It hasn't proven that, uh, you know, giving it's medically proved that giving lowers your blood pressures. It reduces the stress in our life. And uh, we will experience less anxiety and giving help and uh, move away from depression every moment. And it somewhat helps, you know. Generosity help in increasing our self-esteem in our life. So there is uh, some opportunity we have to make a difference in the life of someone, you know, that can be changed and that can be shaped, you know. And it's very important in our lives. What exactly generosity counts? What should be the generosity in the life of ordinary Christian person? That's very important. It, it is a distinct gift. Is it a distinct gift or is it not? Is it that generosity that you're working in our daily life? Is it? Are we doing that? How do we become generous? And some people have no idea of that. But probably, what does it mean? How do we become generous? Well, generous is giving something extra beyond what we have. An ordinary Christian should be a generous, which means he, he needs to serve with patiently to the needs of the people. We become generous in such a way that, that when we see good, good to be done on the other side through sound habits, healthy self-critical understanding. As Luke chapter 22 verse 48 says, To whom much has been given, much will be required. The Bible says that. Well, they do not go far enough if we don't do it. Much is given, so much has to be shared. So nearly when you think about generosity, it demands upon us that that most essential thing is to progress of the Christ likeness in our life. That's what generosity is all about. It's not instead thinking of generosity that we do. It's a talk about Christian must understand generosity as a quality of a character of a person as something that we are we are we able to not what we are are we able to a generous person will naturally engage with acts of generosity it's important generous activity but has to be generous and do some activity which is secondary but we need to understand the character of a true generosity in a person is is a special aware of persons in himself God's gracious provision that he has provided to inspire, to lead a generosity and this activity every day of life. When we're speaking of generosity of spirit, that's what the theme is today. It helps enlarge our imagination, sort of think largely that, that you know, influence, that influence our minds, thoughts and words. And when we worship the Lord, our God, it signifies the act that prompts us to do it. We should, we should be a generous followers of Christ. We can say that. That's very important. We must first, that's as Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, let's all of us first must have, we must first have the mind of Christ. That's every thought that is captive to obey Christ. In order to give, as Jesus gives, we need to be generosity of spirit or, if you will, the spirituality of generosity that can take place. 
In ancient time, you know, the whole generosity of spirit which was there, uh, you know, is very contrast to the Roman world. Just share a little history so that we know why Christians are called to be generosity or be generous in spirit. In the first century Roman world, there was thinking, you know, that a, a generosity is a basically a virtue. It is a virtue uh, which is well suited or well used by the powerful and rich benefactors. They are very generous because they were rich, they were able to do it. The word generous is basically come from the original word from Greek which means genesis and genesis means beginning. That's the generosity that comes. To the pagan world there was a making one promise in the beginning, in the right in the starting they make promises into well rich noble families and they make promises in the noble family and they will follow that promises. In Roman world it was considered to be as high status, to be generous, to be a very high person, a very high person of a high status. And so this is what it believes. But the Bible tells us something in a contrast to this. The truth is not only New Testament tells about it, but from the beginning to the end of the Bible, God speaks of the generous and good gifts. In the book of Genesis, God speaks of the cosmos, lavishing upon us the goodness and pronounces blessing upon the creation. Lavishly, whatever the Lord has plenteously generosity towards mankind has sort of given us, as he says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 20, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth. Every tree, see, every plant, every tree with seed in its food and its fruits and you shall have them for food. So beautiful. Genesis chapter 1 and mind identifies somewhat God's character towards the creation. First, it creation is he created out of nothing. So nothing is imp very important to have. There's nothing. Then he put into everything, existing it, by result that God is giving it and it's, a, it's sort of creating the creation and having in mind his engagement in creating a creation order, he renews, he sustains and day by day, minute by minute, everything in this whole universe, in this whole cosmos. You see, being today, you know, children's day, children always sing in the Sunday school and we've been singing for a long time and you must have been singing by a song by Cyril Alexander. He says, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. How generous. Having made such things, you know, and birds and the airs, the lilies, and so we, and the very bearer of God's image in our life, uh, we call not to be anxious about our daily needs because God's provide. That's what Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Do not be anxious. For your heavenly father knows what you need. You say in Revelation, in John Gospel, the Lord announces new heaven and the new earth. In the midst of, you know, some justly rich place with abundance is created. He invites us. He says like this in Revelation 22 verse 17. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. How beautiful. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let everyone who wishes take water of life as a gift. What a generosity God creates and freely gives his love to us. And Lord recreates so that at the end of the day, everyone is made anew in his life because may be grateful and thankful. And that's very important. So when we see the beginning of creation and we see the revelation, the Bible, the scripture emphasizes the generosity of the spirit that creates, that animates a salvation history in our life. And that's what it is. He planned to provide and provide to God and protects and to have the internal inheritance. Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 says, God's covenant with Abraham, for example, is marked by generosity. 
not by the promise of good home and bountiful descended lot of children but also anticipate that Abraham all families of the earth shall be blessed all families of the earth shall be blessed that's the generosity of spirit he would like to provide not only to ourselves but he want to through us give it to whole earth every habitant every human being so the law of the Moses also has something to give the priests, the prophets, the king, all the officers of Israel, all constitute together to give the generosity of the Spirit to everyone, what they have generously received. He filled God's generous with the wisdom, with holiness, with power. You know, that's, that's where we, we come to understand the fullness of Christ. A fullness of self-gift of Christ. Apostle Paul say, For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. And when he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Isn't it beautiful? We become rich because God wants us to be rich and he wants to be poor so that we may not lack anything. The generosity of the Spirit from Christ is overflowing upon us. Through each act, God gives us his messianic ministry that God shows, has led the Jesus show in his life that through his deeds we can have them. He has done it. The whole economy of the world, the oikonomikos, which means the custom of the house, has been given, created. The whole household affairs, the stewardship at home depends upon this divine economy that God and Jesus Christ has created for us. And that's what is reflected on God's household economy in our life, in day to day. There's a paradigm work in our life. It has to be done. It helps people in the world to grow and understand who our Lord is. God's household is there with full of riches and giving away, giving away what he has provided because he has become poor to give us because his death his very sacrifice has led us to have this salvation have the spirit of everything that we require plenteous bountifully hospitality ready of the word to welcome joyful delight making everything known to the Christians and become as a testimony to the people around you know if we inhabit the world of good and perfect gift, we will live in the created and sustained by God. Who, it, it is not different to us and from us. But it's very difficult to do that. Because there are some lies that are there. That lies that people have spread about generosity. The lies that, that really created a Satan's work against the work of kingdom of God. We need time. Like COVID which has really created a lot of problem. People don't want to share. People don't want what they have. They've become possessive. They've become more introverted about what they have. And that's not the way God created us. Not he created a household generosity full of spirit. He never created like this. It was given his creation and his streams of life and life of Jesus itself was given the basic intention was that we lack nothing. That's the promise God has done. You know, the, the recent studies that have showed and the current trends are 1% of his own uh, more, riches more uh, than 50% of the world's wealth. You know, only 1% wealthy people owns the 50% of the world's wealth. That's what the world is living in. It's a, it's, a, it's a very sad statistic that people who are rich only on one person, they are not very rich people, but they own it, 50% of the wealth of this whole world. God wants us to understand, to share generosity of spirit and come out of any form of cynicism or kind of a despair. We must, we must come out. We must come out from the very endless strings of failures, frustration that is beyond our ability. We need to come back and help and understand people, the abundance of God blessing. We must not miss that mark at all. The real world, the Christian 
must have a discernment and then embrace what is from the Lord. What it make a sense that Christian generosity of spirit inspires greatness of God. It inspired to, unlike Aristotle, you know, in his room of proper humility, grounded with the awareness of what God has done for us, is thinking that way rather than what we can do for others, what God has done for us. Christian generosity of spirit help us to overcome any temptation of any despairing form that is there in this world, to overcome it. We remind us that we bear the image of God. It reminds us the greatness of the gift of God which is given to us. Christian must know as, the, as you know the Matthew Gospel chapter 10 verse 9 says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Not, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than any sparrows. God's good gift is freely, that is given to be seen to be others and freely given. Rather than creating adversaries or com creating competitors in our life. And trying to say that there's a scarcity of sources. They cannot be. We need to trust in God's confidence, which is graciously provided. Let's not leave any kind of doubt when you become generous spirit. The generous spirit is the one that Christ promised, all for they will inherit the kingdom of God. That's a generosity. He would like to give his heavenly treasure to us. He has crowned us with glory and honor and he wants to continue to have that. That's why we return to the very question that definitely orients and understand that the followers of Christ, we ought to be generous because we delight in this hope. We delight in the hope that is made possible through Jesus Christ. We must grow through the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ into our life and to be generously giving. Our hope ultimately rests neither on what we are, nor on our wits or on our fist, but it's on the promises of God we share very gladly, very openly, very sincerely and liberally. Our hopeful Christians are not preoccupied with their position, but are very being possessed by the generosity of spirit. That's what is required to us, a hope in Christ. I hope and pray that today, as God has preciously provided us, don't think anything about what is happening that, you know, has shaken us away from the presence of generous giving of this one. No, God has not shaken. He still keep giving, no matter what may come. Have this promise of hope, of generosity of his creation, of his very being, of his very presence, of his very sacrifice, of his heavens and of his earth and what he has created in this whole cosmos for us. He's still giving. And it says in the Bible, Luke chapter 6 verse 38, he says, it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it will be put into your lap. For what the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So that's the way of generosity of spirit in our life. You give it this much, you get it this much. That's it. It's very important how it is the generosity that we have in our life. Let the measure of faith how much we have. Let's examine ourselves. Let us be blessed with this message that we may open up ourselves. We not be worried about what will happen to us. What will happen if things goes out of our lives? It has to go, friends. Unless it goes, it will become rusted. The thief will come. And the disease will come and take away things. Let's pray. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the generosity of the Spirit in our life that you have provided. And this generosity is not something that we inherit ourselves. We need to put our trust in you, Lord Jesus. And we pray that we would be able to understand the scripture we read is only not for us, but is for others. The luxuries that we have is not for us, it's to be shared. And the joy of your living presence is not only for us, 
but need to be joy to the others also who sit in darkness. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you would bless thee and guard and protect your people. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to give a little announcement that on coming 19th, we will have a worship service at 5 o'clock. So you all can join. That's uh, uh, Thanksgiving Day, 94th year of our church. Our bishop will be over here with us. And uh, it will be live telecast to you. So you don't have to worry of coming over here. But you can see it from home and be live telecast to you. Okay, God bless you. Let us all affirm our faith and say together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died and was buried. On the third day He rose again in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings go. Praise Him all creatures God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, and defend you at all times. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and ever. Amen.
say, for lo we be. Thou hast mercy to redeem us, grace to 